And you typically will set aside the first Sunday of the month to attempt to engage personally God the Holy Spirit. There are many spirits that have gone out into the world. Not all of them are holy. There's only one that's holy. And there's going to come a strong delusion in the earth where lying signs and wonders will deceive many. But here's what I know. If you know the presence of God the Holy Spirit, you will not be a part of those who are deceived. Okay? Now there are things about religion that I don't understand. In my journey, I have been in Catholic churches and Baptist churches and Lutheran churches and Presbyterian churches, Anglican cathedrals, Eastern Orthodox, whatever they call those things, I assume they're cathedrals, independent charismatic churches and Christian Missionary Alliance, and all of them have some kind of rituals they go through. The one that I can't quite get a hold of is pass the peace. Anybody ever had to pass the peace? Look at that. And so you stand and you say, and the peace be with you. I suppose that is to engage the congregation in something other than stand up, sit down, kneel, sit down, stand up and go. But here we welcome a person. God the Holy Spirit is a person. He can be grieved. He can, he can be embraced. He can be rejected. He has emotions. He has access to the mind of the Father. And he also has a job description. He's both your helper, your intercessor, your comforter, the revealer of truth, your guide from this day forward. Once he comes, he will forever be with you. He's your umbilical cord to God the Father. And he will show you things to come. What that means is we have access to the mind of God in our present situation. For instance, there's a couple of circumstances here about things to come. Number one and number four. We got a list of things going on up here this morning. See, some of us have been trained over time to know his presence, respond to his voice. So listen to this. This is for somebody. Removal of the thorn in the side, which presents as a log in the eye. Grace is present to see from his perspective of grace so that the thorn in the flesh, that is, the offense that you're carrying, can be removed. How many of you know it's dangerous to carry an offense? I taught on this just last week. Once you're offended, you see everything through the offense and you accumulate them where there are none. So if you're packing it this morning, God is saying to you, there's grace here for you to unload that. You unload it by asking for grace to forgive. Part of honoring the Christ and the other is to not throw away your brother. These relationships are eternal. I realize that in all probability, some of us will be in heaven going, what are you doing here? <laughs> Surprise, God didn't throw him away. <laughs> Here's another one. Cross words in your job are going to take a 90 degree turn. Cross roads in your job are going to take a 90 degree turn. It's a play on words, right angle on the decision and the move that you should take. Do I need to amplify that? It's just that God's going to give them the right angle. Okay. You have a job situation that you're puzzled about, but the Lord is going to give you the right angle on this. Okay. How many of you know he can be trusted to lead you? Okay, there's your mental ascent. But when it comes to actually stepping out, what, what gets in the way? Fear? See, we're all confident in the, in the devil's job description. We absolutely believe he'd come to kill, steal, and destroy. We're confident of that. Then we say God is good, and we get in a situation where it doesn't feel good. I have news for you. Christianity is not about you. It's about him and your role in his plan. So if we're okay with living and dying in Christ, then he gets to decide how we live and die. Amen. Yeah, but you're a radical. I'm waiting on these others. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do as we return to worship. I'm going to invite you to invite him to visit you. You need a visitation of his refreshing. We always, always need him.
We sing songs like, I'm so desperate for you, but we don't really realize how desperate we actually are. Because God's favor is upon you, but so are his requirements for obedience. So the things that you've been packing and just kind of make things look cloudy between you and the Lord, ask him to clear it up. There's something so incredibly peace-giving about the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. Because it's, it's the reassurance from the Father. He still knows your address. You're still engaged with him. Dan, do we need to release the children about now? Well, I, I'm not requiring you to leave. I mean, the children are, are just as capable of encountering the presence of the Lord as anybody else because this is a spirit dynamic. It's not an intellectual dynamic. I have watched our children pray for boo-boos and the boo-boos are healed. I have heard our children prophesy way above their pay grade. So we can't think of them as someday. They are right now. I don't know if the parents want to keep them with them or not. That's your call. I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> you think I'm joking. I'm serious. <laughs> Can we keep them in for another 10 minutes? As far as I'm concerned. All right. Let's do that. Thank you. <clears throat> I guess that means us. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to ask you to, sing, to identify yourself on this, but I'm going to ask you to listen. And then as we go back into worship, I want you and the Holy Spirit to engage on this word. Now, we're going to give him first shot at you, okay? And if you can't make the connection on your own, we'll pray for you collectively later. But always, I want you to have the opportunity to see what he will do for you. Because if he's speaking these things, he desires to confirm these things. Is it Are we on? Yeah, we're on. Uh, I saw someone who's having pain in their left knee, and it has to do with an old injury and some ligaments in there. Left knee. Um, I heard adenoids, uh, and a child who's having problems with their adenoids and around the issue of removal. Um, do you want people just to kind of take it on their own? Is it? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So adenoids, the Lord was, uh, wanted to address problems with adenoids in a child. I saw a right wrist, and this wrist had been uh, crushed. And I couldn't tell if it was an old injury or a new injury, but the bones had really, 
been significantly injured. And there was some discussion with the doctor about fusing wrist bones. I don't know if they even do that kind of thing. Um, but it, it, what it would they do, do. Okay. Oh, they do? Okay, so it would, there was some question about the loss of mobility um, in the right wrist. I saw someone that was being plagued with very dark thoughts and there was a season in your life where you had already gone through some of this and battling uh, severe depression and it was actually the enemy coming in the terms of suicide. And um, this thing has approached you again and you're feeling significantly weary because you just don't know that you can go through battling and surviving that again. And I felt like the Lord wanted to uh, say, you're not alone. You're not left to your own resources, that he uh, is also present. And not only that, that the body of Christ, this is one of the reasons why we live in a body to um, not only, you're, you never approach something alone. The body of Christ should be that someone has access to resources beyond themselves. And I'm talking spiritual resources, emotional resources, etc. Um, I heard someone asking, talking to the Lord, and they said the following, do you even see me? Do you even know I'm alive? And this has been a theme in your discussions with the Lord. And I believe what I heard the Lord respond to you was, I see you, I am attentive to every thought, every heart desire, oh, yeah. and every need that you have. That's what I believe I've heard. And then the last thing, I saw the structure of an eyeball, and medically, I don't even know, I'm just going to say what I saw. Um, <laughs> as the eyeball came back in and attached, I think there's like nerve endings that attach back into parts of the brain, I'm assuming. Um, but in these nerve endings, the, the sheathing, some kind of a coating around the nerve endings uh, was becoming um, degrading, breaking down, and it was affecting the sight. Um, it was almost like a diamond or, or a prism. When you hold it into the light, it has reflects multiple, off of m the multiple planes of the prism. And um, that, that's the effect it was having in your eye. And the problem is, it was causing you to see um, like double. Uh, it was messing with your vision uh, to the point that you could not focus and see one item. It was impacting the vision so that you were seeing multiple planes at one point in time. I don't know how to explain that. I'm looking at Mary. I don't know if there's any medical, but it's messing with your ability to see singularly. Is that it? That's it for now. Now, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the actual administration of manifestation gifts of the Spirit, we're dealing with the word of knowledge here. God is saying specifically to individuals who have various situations going on in their life, I'm being attentive to you. And he's not pointing these things out just to say, sorry about your luck. He's actually indicating that if you want to engage with him on your issue, he wants to engage with you in this hour. So we're going to give the Holy Spirit the first round as we're going to worship. So I want those of you who are responding to these things in your heart, just begin to say to God, okay, God, if that's what you're saying, I'm ready to receive it. Let me see it. Now, particularly with those of you who have battled suicidal thoughts, that has its source in darkness. And when you have battled it, battled it alone for a long, long time, you grow weary and discouraged that you can never be free. And I'm promising you, we can take authority over that demonic spirit and you can be free. But I want to give the Holy Spirit the first shot this morning, because if he will meet you at your point of need individually, then your faith level is rising. Later, we will engage with you in that because that's another avenue we have. The laying on of hands is another vehicle the Holy Spirit uses 
to encourage you and strengthen you and bring his healing grace in the name of Jesus Christ to your situation. So if you would, please stand. We're going to re-engage worship. We'll see what the Lord will do and we'll be attentive to his ear. As we return to worship, I want to call our attention to John chapter 16, beginning in verse 7. There's, an, there's a, a one-liner in the scripture that I find to be very, very significant at this season of my life. Jesus says to his disciples, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Now, they didn't get it at the time. But when you consider Isaiah saying that he is the everlasting father, he's making a statement of relationship that will be forever. And he says, I'm going to send another who is like me. And he will be with you forever. So he makes this statement to you. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, he has the Father's permission to send the Holy Spirit. So as you read through John, you'll find that it's both the Father and the Son saying, we will send him to you. And the him is the one who is like us. But he is the one who is to be with you now and forever. So knowing his presence, understanding his person, engaging a relationship with him, starts now and continues into eternity. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father and you'll see me no more. And concerning judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. I'm going to pause right there to say this for those of you struggling mentally. The devil has power. He no longer has authority. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. That is the statement of Christ. The devil still can operate through fear, lying signs, and wonders. Because those who are devil worshipers do see changes in the natural circumstances based upon power. But he has no authority over you. He has no authority in your life. The only grant that he can receive from you is what you give. Because whomever your members serve, your servant to him. That's why when God the Father calls you to himself, he calls you on the basis of his love for you. And when the devil calls you, he wants you to serve. He promises you power because you're a spiritual orphan. The, uh, the witch I'm engaging down in Havana is very amusing to me. She acknowledges the God above and the God below, and she serves the God below, but she's, she believes in both of them. But the God below is empowering her in a situation so that people are fearful of her, that gives her something. I'm enjoying building a relationship with this witch because eventually I expect to speak a word of authority that's going to set her free. Because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Now listen, this is a principle. It's not just a statement to the, to the twelve. There are things he has to say to you, but you can't bear them now. You're simply not yet able to receive them. And here's the, here's the reason. If you refuse to be obedient to what you know, he is not going to tell you anymore. Because if he tells you more, knowing you're going to be disobedient, you're now accountable at a very different level. So you get to decide the measure of revelation you walk in. Those who love me will obey me. And as we demonstrate that, you can expect increased revelation. So, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, the spirit of what? Truth. That means he's not only speaking the truth, he is truth. And he cannot lie. It would be against his nature to lie. So when he says something to you and you say, are you kidding me? No, he's not kidding you. <laughs> He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will hear it from the Father. Because who searches the deep things 
of a man but his spirit and so the spirit searches the deep things of your father and the father knows how to speak your language he knows how to speak dave he knows how to speak jean amber he knows how to speak uh, steve and he knows how to speak alexia those are all different languages and he speaks them all he will disclose that is he will make known to you what is to come would you like to know what's coming down the pike Maybe not. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. It's like it's like that group that made a, um, uh, a deal with the, the Prince of Darkness. In exchange for an eye, he let them see the future. But the only future they could see was the day of their own death. You can't deal with that guy. He's crooked. He was a murderer from the beginner. And when he speaks, he lies because he's the father of all lies. He will disclose. Glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Now, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul makes this prayer on our behalf. He says, I pray that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ might grant to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. Now, there is a spirit of wisdom and revelation available. I don't know what your issue is this morning. I don't know what the obstacle in your life is. I don't know what the hesitation is. But I do know this, that we're in an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit, if you will allow him, if you invite him, if you ask him specifically, he will disclose things to you about that scenario. Now, why can't he do that in your home? Well, he can do that. The Lord visits me in my home. But there's something that happens when we are in a corporate atmosphere of worship and adoration of our Father. It's almost like, uh, rather than standing at, in some of the places I go, if you're going to get a shower, when the water is on, it's generally going to be cold, and it's going to come out without a spigot. It's just a, just a stream of water, and you have to figure out how to get it to where you want it to go. Then you have those fancy ones. I, I forget what they call them, but they just drip down from everywhere all over you. I'm sure some of you have it. Don't tell me I don't want it. I want the one that goes... And I've got one of those. But when we're together corporately, it's like standing in a rain shower, not just your personal shower. Because there's an atmosphere of, of God's presence that can be quickened to your own spirit. Does that make any sense to any of you? Okay. I'm jealous for you to know his presence, for you to personally know when the Holy Spirit sits down in the restaurant with you. Typically, when he sits down with me, you'll see something like this. That's my being's response to his manifest presence. And I'm grateful for that because I've got friends. There's this, oh, I don't want that one in the restaurant. <laughs> but if we will spend time in his presence, we will be assured of his presence. I'm so grateful in my travels, particularly when I have to travel alone to other countries. I'll get ready to take the pulpit or the seminar teaching and all of a sudden there'll be this. And my response is, thank you. You know, I appreciate it when you show up. Just a reminder to me, you're not alone. Okay, let's stand. If you're able. If you've got the bad knee, you don't have to stand. mouth is 20 to 30 years ago over periodically both here at this church and other places God has said that when I speak I'm transparent a lot and and I say that because I don't mean to make anybody uncomfortable Lanny was talking about the enemy and uh, there was also a word about mental struggles and Lanny also spoke about mental struggles and I'm no stranger to any of that stuff. And um, this past week, I hope there's somebody that relates to this. I'm going to feel awfully alone. <laughs> you know, hours had gone by the day, and it's like, Pete, you've been battling the enemy in your mind for the past five hours. Wake up, buddy. 
Anybody understand me? Thank you. You know, and bless this lady, this is my wife, you don't know it. She was out in the garden, so it's a good thing. Because I had to take authority over all that stuff and remind myself of who I am in Christ, for goodness sakes. Shut up and leave me alone and you have no authority. I have all authority and power because it's been given to me because of things like this song, By His Blood. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. And sometimes you just got to get down to it. Amen. And if you're Italian and Hispanic, that's what you do. <laughs> and I believe you. <laughs> Didn't mean to offend anybody. <laughs> But if you're, in the, if, you, if, if you're the kind of person that gets in that, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel weird. Remember who you are because of what Christ gave you. Amen? Amen. All right. One of the things that I'm committed to is giving the Holy Spirit opportunity. It's insufficient to say you believe. You must also know. And we have to experience him. So by example, and through education and experience, we attempt to mature in our understanding of who God is and our responsibility to, to follow his leadership. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they, they demonstrate they are in fact sons of God. Now we're gonna do uh, a little something here. Brian, would you stand up, please? Come join me up here. Brian is going to handle whatever testimonies have occurred as you have been sitting with the Lord. If there's been a change in your circumstance, please come and tell it to Brian. In a moment, we're going to begin to pray for whatever needs exist within this particular gathering. But there's another word that David is going to share with us now for someone who needs to hear this. I saw this dark chamber and it was filled with water and there's somebody in there that was drowning. And they were in despair and probably even suffering panic attacks. And the Lord, however, was able to see through that dark chamber and bring light into it and he, and he dropped a lifeline. And the lifeline was us. We were hand, linked hand in hand reaching out to this person. But the person had to make a choice because they were so f fearful and ashamed of whatever they had been walking into, they were afraid of coming out into the light to be exposed for whatever it was that they were walking in. But the Lord was saying that, you know, come, I'll forgive you, and I'll set you free. Thank you. There are a lot of places you can go to attend a church service that are a lot safer than our father's house. But I'm not insensitive to the fact that when the Lord puts his finger on something as sensitive as suicidal thoughts or you're walking in shame, that we need to do what we can to supply an atmosphere where you're not exposed. So what I'm going to do in a moment is invite our prayers to come stand here with me. And then those of you who need prayer, start moving in this direction. And somewhere in that mix will be those of you who are responding to a specific word of knowledge with which you identify today. Others of you are coming because once God starts doing stuff, all kinds of things can happen. We know that here at our Father's house. But regarding shame, I want you to understand something. All these religious depictions of Jesus hanging on the cross with some kind of swaddling clothes wrapped around his groin. No, they were crucified naked. And that in the scripture is called shame, okay? They saw that they were naked and they were ashamed. Jesus took our shame that we might have his glory, okay? So the shame issue has been dealt with. You're not gonna be judged at our father's house because of the mess you're in. I know you're messed up. That's job security for me, but nonetheless. <laughs> But nonetheless, we receive you where you are, but we do not want you to remain in the condition in which you arrive. We believe God heals spirit, soul, and body. That he will restore you to your identity as his offspring and your destiny as his representative. 
And to do that, you have got to be willing to come out of the shadows. We're not put off by the underbelly that you're dragging with you. He will bring those things to the light and the light will dispel those shadows out of your life. Okay. So those of you who are prepared to stand with me in prayer for others this morning, come join me here. Uh, those of you who have a testimony of the change stances since you arrived this morning, you come tell uh, Brian because we want to be careful to give God the glory for what he does. And when you speak and affirm what you know he's done, you come into alignment with it and can stand against that which will come to steal it from you. Okay. So I want you to stand if you would, please. Yes, ma'am. One of our other prophetic people uh, received the scripture, and we think it is appropriate. I think it's appropriate to read it now. The rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer, bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out. It always produces fruit. I will accomplish all I want it to and will prosper everywhere I send it. You will live in joy and peace. Those are promises to anyone who has been walking in fear or darkness or depression. You need to grab hold of those words. There's so many things that can be accomplished in the next few minutes. The laying on of hands is one of those things. Confessing your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed is another. The sovereign activity of the Holy Spirit moving in your circumstances is another. The anointing with oil for healing is another. There's so many opportunities that God supplies for you to experience the reality of his touch in your circumstances. So those of you this morning who need to respond to a word of knowledge or bring any other need before the Lord, we will agree on earth as touching this thing and he will do it for us. That's his promise, not mine. So Peter, if you'll take us back into worship. We're going to close out in this time of ministry to God's people on behalf of what the Lord has shown them about His grace or whatever need they're carrying. So as we sing, you just step out and come approach someone with whom you feel an affinity or who is available. And we will pray and see what the Lord will do. Hi, um, since about January, I've been having trouble with my left leg, um, and mostly is the pain is in my knee, uh, and it hurts to get, and as the uh, months progress, the more pain I had in my leg. Um, I've been to the doctor several times, they've checked to make sure no blood clots and that kind of thing. But it's been very, very painful for me to walk. Um, I went from walking, using my cane only to get, go long distances, and now I sometimes need it, needed it to get around my home. But when they told us to stand up and sing and worship, I did, and I felt a tingling from the bottom of my feet working up my legs. And I, I, I still have some pain but it was easier for me to get up and walk across the room today than I've had in months. If anybody has any more testimonies, if you could make your way forward, we'll be dismissing shortly, but we have uh, one more that happened long distance. I'm aware of a friend who uh, is on travel, and since I know He's had different occasions of pain. I thought I'd message him to ask if he had any hurts or any ailments like this. And he mentioned he had pain in his knee, his left knee. And it was only after he mentioned that that I said that the word that was mentioned was for left knee. And I asked him to put his, his hand on his knee 
and I met, met, sent in a text, a, a prayer uh, for, for healing. And um, after that, we both said amen. And he, uh, uh, I asked him how it was feeling, and he said that the pain was gone. It was feeling better, only a little tired. Uh, and uh, I thought pretty awesome that um, he was feeling all that better in his knee. And this is just insane, a text message back and forth with him. Last chance, any more testimonies? Thanks for coming today. We're going to close in a quick word of prayer, then you'll be dismissed. Um, for those who are first time guests, um, if we'd like to have you join us in the hospitality room, which is the last door on the left, right as you head out the, the main doors. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for meeting us here today. We thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your impacting presence. And God, I ask that you would seal in the hearts of each one here the work that's been done today. We thank you and we praise you and ask for your blessing to go with us as we go out this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ministry is going to continue up front. If you need anything, otherwise you are dismissed.